Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg and this is the second video in a series featuring the Onyx 55 watt laser machine by Monport. Welcome back and thanks for joining me for the second video on the Onyx Laser Machine by Monport. I have this video designed to get you up and running with your machine as fast as possible. Part one, I'm going to open up the cover here and we're gonna do some checks inside of the work area to make sure that the machine will be ready for power up. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I have all of the packaging material removed completely out of the entire area of the machine. That sounds pretty basic, but when I move the gantry forward here, we're going to find that there is one last piece of foam that was still in the machine. There's also one more piece of packaging, and that is this Velcro strap around the cover for the laser head. That was on there because this laser head is held on with some pretty powerful magnets and it's important that that is removed to make sure that this Velcro does not cover up the access hole for the laser beam. Since I'm working around the laser head, I want to just gently and slowly move the laser module back and forth, making sure it has free range of motion and that none of this uh, cable track here gets hung up on anything. Once that's set, I'll move the entire assembly frame here forwards and backwards, checking for the same thing. Nice, smooth movement. The last thing to check is going to be to remove the cover off the laser head. And I'm going to do a quick inspection of the mirror and the lens to make sure that it is absolutely 100% free of any fingerprints, dust, or debris. I'm also going to check this pass-through mirror The last thing I'm going to check inside of the machine here is going to be off to the side and I'm going to be looking at the coolant for the machine. Mine came factory filled. You can see the uh, coolant level right here. That looks good. Step number one is complete. I'm ready to move on to step number two and that's installing the exhaust system and the cables up to the machine. I'll take you through a brief overview of what I'm going to be doing, starting with the inline exhaust fan. I'm noting the direction of flow, all the exhaust is going to be going out that direction, which means the Onyx machine is gonna be connected going up to this end. Moving on to all the clamps and duct hosing, I'm going to start with the 120 millimeter duct. One end of this is gonna to connect to the exhaust on the Monport machine. The other end is going to go up to this duct reducer, the smaller side, of course. I'm then going to move over to the 150 millimeter duct. I'm going to cut off a short section of this. This will get attached to the other side of this duct reducer. That will allow all of this to be connected up to the input side of the exhaust fan. I'll then take the balance of the duct hosing down here and connect that to the output side of the inline fan. Here's the brief fly through. Here's the 120 millimeter ductwork connected directly to the back of the machine. And we follow this hose all the way around until we get to the reducer that's underneath here. And then we cut off a section of the 150 millimeter. Now you can use the entire section if you want. I chose to cut a little stubby section and connect that here. I moved around to the front of the machine here so that we can see here is the flow arrow once again that I keep mentioning. So the machine uh, exhaust comes in, flows out this way, goes through the final tubing, exhausted to the outside. The second step in part number two is connecting the cables up. This is super simple, but there's one spot that we don't want to skip. I'm going to start out with the very basic things of, yep, connecting the power cable up to the machine. And then the USB cable, I'm going to show you something on the back of the machine here because there are two USB ports. One is for the camera system that's mounted in the top glass here. And then the second USB port is the communications port that we want for connecting up to the computer. The last cable that I have is this little interconnect cable, and this is the most important cable on this machine, and that is because 
without this small little connector in the back of the machine, the laser will not fire. This gets plugged into the port next to the power outlet. With step number two all complete, I'm ready to proceed on to step number three, and that is installing the Lightburn software on the computer and connecting it up to the machine. Let's take a look at the computer at the Lightburn website. Here I'm at one of the landing pages and I clicked on free trial. There is a free 30 day trial period for Lightburn where they have all of the tools and features unlocked. If you're ready to purchase Lightburn software, the version that you'll be looking for on this machine is the DSP version. On power up, the Onyx laser machine will reacquire the home position in this back corner. I'm going to let the Lightburn software auto detect the Onyx machine. For this, I'm going to make sure that this section here says choose. If it says anything other than choose, Lightburn software will not be able to auto detect the machine. This looks good. I'll click on devices and find my laser. I get a dialog box here and some of the text is uh, clipped off. And I found if I grab a corner here, I can move this dialog box a little bit larger so that we can read everything. This makes sense and I'll click next. And it's going to scan for devices and it looks like it found one already. And here's that Ruida controller that it's finding inside of the machine. And it's telling us that it can connect two different ways, either packet USB or serial USB. I did check this out on the internet and we'll head over to that right now. Switch back over to Lightburn here. I am going to just click on packet USB, add device, and I'm going to rename this to Onyx. I'll click next. And where do I want the origin of the laser? This is another way of the software asking, where is the homing of the laser? And this is going to be in the rear right corner, over in this corner. Again, I've got a dialog box here that's clipped off. So I'm gonna use my trick of grabbing the corner here and extending that out. Gives me a brief summary of how I'm connected up to the machine, what I renamed it as, the work area of 510 millimeters by 300 millimeters and the origin or that homing point is going to be in the rear right corner. I can click finish here. I'll scroll down to the bottom of the list and we'll see the Onyx laser. I can click OK. On my Lightburn software, I have a lot of machines that I have connected up to Lightburn. So I'll need to pull this menu down and go to the bottom of the list. Lightburn software always adds a new machine to the very bottom of the list. If you're doing a fresh install of Lightburn, your machine will automatically be the only one in the list. We'll see here that we're connected and it really is that easy to connect Lightburn software up to the machine. The first thing I wanna check out with the software is I want to draw just a box, a random box, somewhere in the middle of the work area of the software. And I'm going to frame that out to see if I can get the software to get the machine to move. Before I do that, I can see that my start from is from the current position. And that means if I draw a box, it's going to draw a box, as it says, from the current position in the corner. And I want to use absolute coordinates. To accomplish this, I'll pull this box down and go uh, absolute coordinates. Now I'll draw this just any size box somewhere in the middle of the work area here, and I can click frame. And look at that, it is framing out this box I just drew. So just a few minutes ago, we connected the software up to the machine. I just drew a box and we're already framing that out in the work area. The next thing that we're going to do is load some material into the machine, set the focus, and we'll start lasering. The first material I'm going to place in the machine is going to be this three millimeter cardboard that comes with the machine. I'm 
Next, I'm going to remove the cover off of the laser head so that we can check out setting the focus of the laser head. Now this focusing lens here, this is a two inch focusing lens. And when we convert that over to millimeters, that is 50.8 millimeters. And the machine does come with this focus guide here and it does have a 50.8 millimeter mark on it or step right here that's placed at the top of where the lens would be. One of the tricks that I found is I can lay this gauge down on top of the work material, index the laser head down until the nozzle here just touches the top of the gauge here. And this too will put this laser head in perfect focus. The controls for moving the laser head up and down for setting the focus, that is located inside the software of Lightburn underneath the move tab. And here I'm going to set the uh, distance here at one millimeter. And it's these up and down keys. These are going to move the laser head up or down. I need to move it down a little bit. So I'll just index this down several times. That looks good. The first thing I'd like to do is a simple circle cutout. I'll navigate over to cuts and layers. We'll see that the mode is line. Right now I'm going to leave it on line and I'm going to leave the speed at uh, 20 and I'm going to set my power at 60% max and 60% minimum. The min max power levels, I'll explain that when I cut out a square up next. First though, I'll turn on the exhaust fan using the included remote with the machine. And I'll hit the start button and we'll watch the very first cutout on the machine. We'll see that the laser moved around like it was trying to laser cut the circle, but nothing happened. What's going on? For this, we need to travel around to the back side of the machine. And there's this beam attenuator back here. And this is a manual override for the overall laser power going out. And right now I've got mine turned down. And I need to turn this all the way clockwise until it stops. And let's try this again. There, now we're marking with the laser. I'll lift the cardboard out and we'll see that that did a perfect cutout of that. The reason why I did a circle is because I wanted to make sure that what I was drawing in light burn translated correctly. It also makes sure that all the mechanics of moving the laser head around are set correctly. I can delete this circle out select the square tool and click and drag holding shift will make a perfect square and i can position this around i'll move it off to the side here now the reason why i'm picking a square is to demonstrate what min max power levels do if i left these both the same when the laser slows down when it gets up to the corner here it is still going to be using 60 percent laser power even though the laser is slowing down to make that perfect corner and it's going to uh, either over engrave or over burn that corner. What I can do is set my minimum amount here down to say 58%. And this way, when the laser gets up to that corner, the laser beam mark will look a lot more consistent. And check that out. Yep, another beautiful cutout. The cutout just drops out onto the honeycomb here. The other reason why I picked a square is because I wanted to be able to take a square and make sure that the machine is cutting at a perfect right angle. I'll check that on two of the sides here and that looks absolutely perfect. Very quickly I was able to cut a perfect circle and a perfect square. 
Doing these two as the first cutouts on this machine, I know I can send any shape out to the workbed area and I know that the laser is going to trace and follow it out perfectly. Thanks for joining me in this second video in a series. Future videos are going to include the camera setup, setting up the rotary attachment and making sure it's calibrated, and also doing basic maintenance on the machine to keep you up and running at optimum performance. There's gonna be even more videos after that, but those are about the next three videos that I have coming up. I might even spice things up a little bit and do some material performance testing by cutting some thicker wood materials and thicker acrylics. I'd like to know what you'd like to see next by leaving a comment down below. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, or ring that notification bell. It's a great way to know when the next video in the series on the Onyx Laser Machine comes out. Until next time, learn, create, and share.